Hits and Crits. This video is brought to you by Trading Goblin. What's up, Hits and Crits family? Welcome back to another on-target video of this, um, yeah, let's say beginner's guide or like a strategy uh, series we're making. Um, I'm joined again by Larix and Iceman. Um, today, the second episode will cover um, uh, deployment and how to select terrain, which basically follows our list building video. Um, and to conclude that or to be coherent about the, about the series, we will do a, a live list building. So everything we learned in the last video, we will adapt this and take it and use it uh, in, a, in, a, in a live list building and then deploy those two lists together with terrain. So this is what we will learn today from, from uh, two true veterans. And I will uh, you know, do my best to not ask stupid questions as always. So um, yeah, thanks to have you two. Um, I think we can um, start right in. Um, and um, it was one special wish that we use Starks versus Lannisters, the everlasting rivalry, right? The 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 old uh, box that came out. So every, the, I think those two those two factions are is a great uh, classic to to kick things off. So um, yeah, I think we we can start, and I will share uh, the builder uh, for this, so we can start the list building. All right. So here we see. Uh, the song stats builder, and I already selected the Starks. So the Starks will be for Martin, correct? Yes. I want to play right. Starks, and Daniel mm -hmm. starts with a commander for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, let's go with Rob, I guess. Okay, Rob. So Rob, uh, as we discussed last time, we, we, we categorized commanders in certain... Uh, let's say clusters or like like how they play. Can you say one or two sentences about that to to remind us all, Daniel? Yeah, sure, sure. First of all, uh, Rob, obviously going with the classic theme, we definitely pick the classic commander here, uh, which stands for the faction as a whole. Um, and Rob, you know, is a mobility commander, right? Um, he is really shining by uh, playing the positional game. And um, you see his uh, orders and his abilities right up on the screen. So he really fits into the mobility category um, with his order, tactical reposition, and um, his ability enhanced uh, mobility. And he also has this neat little regroup ability, which lets him heal if he um, performs a retreat. So this is uh, something to take in mind. So you probably want to follow this theme uh, while this building. Mm -hmm. And um, I think um, if I'm uh, just, because the next question naturally is like, which unit to put him in and um, a good commander unit for him, um, or like what you could think of would be either the Quanogman Bog Devils, right? They are a unit um, which has a good synergy because it has a six inch movement. And um, besides other things, the order Swift Retreat which allows him, if he is attacked, to perform in retreat, which fits neatly into his regroup ability, right? So there's a nice little synergy there. Um, also, it's a stark option. It's not in a neutral pick or anything, so you can really um, have him there. He has a he packs a good punch with his unit. He also can use his order scout openings to um, yeah support other charges. So this would be something to think of, and I think we should go with the Quanagman Bog Devils here, but just to to also mention it, um, another nice option would be the Stormcrow Dervishes. They also have six inch movement and they have also an ability uh, going for retreats, which is Swift Strike, retreat after your attack. So you can really have this hit and run style, um, which is also a card of Rob hit and run. So yeah, that's uh, also a good unit to put him into. It's also quite um, uh, resilient with this four plus uh, armor and five plus morale. Yeah. So this, what this I, would be the first pick. Yeah, what, what, what I really like, if I had to choose between the two, what I really like about the Crandomy Bog Devils is, as, as you said, hit and run. Basically, if you put the poison out when charging and you have hit and run, you also deal the weekend, right? Yeah. So 
when your when when your opponent then activates or wants to do something a certain action then he has to take two wounds right so i really like about the, i i really love that about about that synergy but as you said, dervishes is also a great a great um, option, which is a little bit more aggressive kind of kind of style. But I I like both. Yeah. All right. So Krenum and Bok Devils as the bunker. Perfect. <clears throat> so then I would go. My next pick would be Graywin because he's uh, Fluffwise Rob's companion, and he's a a good choice. He's a cheap activation. Um, I think when you're going to play Rob, you need to play Grey Wind because of the cheap activation. He can be uh, sitting on an objective behind a nice wall or palisade or something like this. Or he can <clears throat> help support some Stark unit because of his disrupt. And for three points, he's a good and a fluffy choice as well. So I would go with Grey Wind. Agreed. Okay. Um, yeah, if you want to go from there, um, you can also, again, uh, think of our last video. We said um, what is part of a good all-rounder all -rounder list, and that's what we are aiming for here, right? It's not like um, crazy min-max list or whatever. It's just a good all-rounder list. And we said what you definitely need is some kind of cavalry, and you should also go for some kind uh, of ranged units. And by incident, uh, the Stark faction has one of probably the best calf unit in the game, which is the house tally calf, right? So that would be, um, yeah, a pick. It's basically a no brainer pick in any Stark list. It's not like that you have to include it or whatever, but you should go for some calf and house tally is a great shock calf. It's also quite stable and it has a nice support ability um, from the Valley banner. And now we are focusing again on the mobility part. Um, it also has a nice synergy with, um, Scar openings, which makes you basically immune against uh, something like a corpse pile or blocking terrain, right? Be because you have your rerolls anyway, and you have the rally banner. And um, we have a reoccurring theme here too, because we have already healing in Rob's unit, and now we have another source of healing. And um, we are slowly adding uh, a little bit of sustain in some in a, in a faction that is otherwise uh, not, yeah, not really known for being like the sustain the sustain faction. And um, going with that, we can also think about attachments here because um, the Tali Cav has a nice uh, synergy with uh, at least two attachments, which is the Winterfell Guardian and uh, the Glory Seeker. Both uh, both are like um, boosting uh, the sustainability even more by uh, adding to the yeah morale values and either um, dealing wounds on past tests or healing even more. And yeah, both are good choices. Martin, what's your favorite? I would go <clears throat> with the Glory Seeker because I like uh, the point of morale that he gives. So with a um, where would we, you're on a three up morale save and you're healing one and dealing one and that's very safe. And we all know it's a dice game. The Winterfell Guardian is great, but a four is not a three. And when it's important and it's my main unit, it's a expensive unit and I want to contain to boost their mobility um their survivability and for this I would go with a glory seeker. Winterfell Guardian is a good choice, but for me when it comes to list building I'm more of a defensive safe guy and I want to have the glory seeker please. But the sculpt is brain. That's true. <laughs> the sculpt of the Winterfell Guardian is like I, I, I would say is my favorite calf model. Just caveat on uh, what we just said. All right, so how to continue now? I would go with the Cranach Man. Yeah, so the five point Cranach Man. Uh, the Cranach Man trackers, yeah. The because, trackers, okay. Yes, mm -hmm. Because I need a range unit. They are um, a range unit in two ways. At first, they have their short bows, so they can shoot some arrows here and there. And <clears throat> the hidden traps, when I go for the hits, this is a long range mobile a unit and I can put them in the middle. I can annoy guys with the hidden traps and I can hand out this very, very useful vulnerable token, which I can combine with the hidden traps and against a normal unit with a four up um, defensive save 
with Mark Target with the vulnerable token. On average, it's three wounds. And that's pretty good for a five point unit. Um, and I need some more activations, so I would go with them. Okay. And uh, that's a great choice, I think, because it also um, is a six inch movement unit, right? And um, going with our mobility theme, um, because we also have like um, uh, the order on Rob, um, which allows to units to shift like tactical reposition, you know, and uh, now like every unit we have uh, from here is kind of mobile in itself and especially even more with tactical reposition. So yeah, great choice, I think. Okay, so um, if we are looking at this now, we are at 24 points. Um, we are rocking four activations already. Um, but yeah, like we kind of know that we at least want to save 12 points for three NCUs. So the question is, what do we do here? We don't get another infantry unit or anything for um, four points in Starks, but there's a solution. Um, we can go um, for another direwolf here, but we first of all, all obviously have to um, include the attachment, which unlocks the direwolf, which is, a, which is a thing why Rob as a commander is a good commander because he brings a wolf with him. But um, now we could like use the free slot, attachment slot in Quantum Man Trackers to add something like Rick and Osha, which makes sense here. It's a little bit, yeah, it gives a morale boost. Um, so maybe the rally banner may proc um, and it gives some kind of defensive abilities um, on Osha. And which is more important, if you add this for one point, um, you have three points that you can spend on a direwolf, and you are then uh, at five activations for 28 points, which is really good and allows you to create an eight activation list, which is, as we discussed, favorable in certain matchups and game modes. Yeah, perfect. So then we can go with the NCUs, and my first NCU choice. Um would be Sansa, because as we discussed in the last video, you need something with the replacement effect. And uh, Rob's cards are very important here. We need hit and run and um, uh, sudden retreat. And I want to play them more than once. And if I play them, I can pick one for Sansa's once in a game ability, so I can bring one back this way. And sometimes one zone is not that useful for you. Let's say you're in the middle of the fight, you're okay, how things going. <clears throat> you can replace the horse or maybe the crown with Sansa's card bring back effect. So that would be my first choice to be more flexible when it comes to NCU and the tactic board game. Okay, perfect. So we have a replacement effect. We also said that we that you want in general something which creates value, even if you don't activate or hop on the board. So I think a, a great pick and maybe, in my opinion, uh, at least one of the strongest NCUs in the game. Chris is already hovering over it, Aya Stark. Um, yeah, because um, having free activations in general, uh, free actions, I mean, is like a very, very good value. And um, yeah. Mobility is the theme of the list is in general very important in this game. So um, yeah, picking Aya, um, you're doing definitely nothing wrong. One thing to consider though, you only have two infantry units. Aya works only in infantry units. It doesn't work on your Talikav, I'm sorry. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, but at least the Bog Devils um, really profit from having free maneuvers definitely, or retreats. Yeah. Yeah, it's also great. Like, 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 just one sentence on it. When mm -hmm. I play that, uh, or played Rob uh, in the past, there's also that that great um, um, th those tokens. If you are in a bad position, through you know whatever m might happen, it's a great way to save Rob out of out of something bad, right? Because yep. they they he he can just retreat for free at the start of the enemy turn and regroup off of it. So this yeah. is, uh, I mean, it's it, it's not supposed to happen, but if it happens, mm -hmm. you have the tokens, right? So um, yeah, great, it's great. A, it's a good uh, get out of jail card too, yeah. and it can be used uh, in every possible manner, defensively, offensively, and so on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and don't forget, Rob has move seven because of enchanted mobility. On average, you will roll a three, so it's retreating ten inches, and a normal infantry unit has movement five. So if he wants to charge you back, he needs a five, and that's a lot. And let's say some units only have movement four, they need a six. Yeah. 
and maybe and, you've even tagged the Karupo still, yeah. and then you're basically yeah, then, safe. Then you're gone, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, perfect. So I've got four okay. more points left. Uh, I would go with Catelyn Stark because I need an influence. Um, she's basically what all Starks want to do. She brings highest attack value, and what's even more important, Starks get highest attack value um, through two cards. But the condition removal is very, very uh, important here. Nothing ruins your day more like a weekend token on your charging cavalry. And then you can say, oh, look at this. I'm influencing my knights. And then the weekend token is gone. Perfect. I can charge you without this token. So this would be my last pick for the NCU slot. Great. All right. Sounds good. So um, yeah. So let's save that list. Um, and I think we can go over to the Lannister side. The only thing I want to, uh, I have a question on is um, I know there is the Tully Calf, which is basically a great tank that you can put in front of it, uh, in front of the Krennicman trackers. But aren't both of you are, when you're playing that list, a little bit, a little bit concerned about having recon in the Krennicman trackers since when those guys get killed? Your opponent scores two. Is that is that an issue? Is that a thing you think about, or or are you like just you know confident and certain? I I will position myself, place myself so that there's no way those guys can die. Um, I think like this list should outshine most of the other lists out there mobility wise. And if somebody gets a charge on your Quenogman trackers, I think. Um, yeah, there, there, there has to be a process in before, <laughs> before. Yeah, yeah, you played it wrong. This, yeah, okay. You know, like, and, Got it. and um, like, also if you use terrain to your advantage and all that, like one shotting a unit is still something you first of all have to accomplish. It's not that easy, and um, you have traps on them to to defend yourself. You can use it on movement, for example, and you have the shift and and many other things yeah. like an Aryu token to get you out of trouble. So it's it's a risky play, um, but it can be really rewarding. And this list might not be the easiest to play um, if you just play it like in a, a normal manner where you put your infantry in front and you know. Um, mm -hmm. So you have to pull out your schemes. But it's at the same time very fun to play. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Um, Lannisters. So Daniel asked me that he wanted to play the bad guys. And mm -hmm. I think the old duel Rob against Jamie would be fun. Mm -hmm. So I would give Jamie to Daniel. Nice. What unit to put him in? Oh, they are couple of choices but I think a very good choice as a hell of a deal for five point because in my opinion they are maximizing the most with him you have this one card where you can roll highest attack dice and you hand out a vulnerable token Kingslayer's Pronus um, so if this unit is going to get charged they hit you <clears throat> with maximum dice with thundering, with a vulnerable token, and after this, uh, with with precision and rerolls and rerolls, yeah. And after this, if this attack uh, is delivered, um, Jamie's Counter Strike and disrupt will come. And if you're a little bit lucky with rerolls, with precision, with a vulnerable token, that's a good chance for bringing down a rang. And I think then this unit was in chest to chest with the Hellabody as there and pretty big trouble you, if you want to charge this unit you need something to block orders and orders blocking is not so common in this game so i think we should go with the halibutiers great could you also um maybe we, we can think about like what kind of commander jamie is because we rated um rob which is seems pretty clear as a mobility commander um how about jamie what do you think what kind of commander is he jamie is uh I would say an offensive, maybe defensive commander, because he can do both things. He can shine on his own. He he's a warrior, and but he has some defensive types like passing the morale test. And but I would say he's more of an offensive commander because of this card, because of the abilities he brings. It's it's not too. It's not so easy to. 
to put him in one category because he's, I would say he's 50-50, maybe uh, a little bit more defensive, maybe a little more, but it's, it's hard. But I would say he's he's a warrior who can bring a lot to your unit. But if it's needed also to your army, because if you draw a card and you can't use him, you can cycle this card for, let's say, you're looking for the counter plot to counter whatever t- um, rising temperature or something like this and he's a, he's a good all round choice i would say okay great so let's go from here um we have a centerpiece unit with a commander which me- really makes uh, the game about himself all his cards has um, have triggers or side effects that are about jamie um that's something to to keep in mind um Following the pattern, I think um, we should also add some cavalry here. We could could go with a light calf, but I think um, we also want some uh, heavy hitter type of unit. And let's go for the Tali, uh, not Tali this time, Knights of Castle Rock, of course. Um, basically, the same arguments apply here as well. They are maybe not as point efficient um, as the Tali Knights, but they are still a great choice. And um, in the same manner, you could also include something like Glory Seeker here, which might be advised. It depends on your list, whether you have the point or not. Um, I think we should um, add an attachment here. But you you would not need to if you really, for example, want a uh, turn code or anything for the point. But in this case, let's go with the Glory Seeker. Okay, perfect. So you have... <clears throat> Uh, center type unit you have some knights for mobility so you also need some range and i think one of the best range units in the game are the um lannister crossbowman definitely yeah they have for six points they have a long range they have sundering they're hitting on threes they've got a four up morale uh, uh four up armor morale is not that great but seven is fine but to boost them a little bit more i would put brawn in him first it's fluff wise it's cool because jamie and rob uh, jamie and Bron do a lot of stuff together um but also it's a strong choice because when you go first and you are playing against a low heel army Bron can go and you can put one and see you on the money bags then they can shoot and then basically healing for the other army is gone and that's very very nasty for a lot of army let's say you play a normal kind of stark army without all this healing it's it's very hard uh, and the thoughts are still open so your opponent needs to think oh what i'm going to do um maybe i'm going letters but when i'm not blocking the swords he's shooting again and with brawn in it they are close to guaranteed to get out two shots around and that's very very strong also, like if you want to, if you decide for okay, then if I, if I don't take swords because I don't want to, I maybe can shut down the crossbowman. Um, the money back also boosts the defense, which is nice too. So yeah, I think it's a very strong pick. Um, yeah, going from there, um, we definitely want uh, a fourth unit. Um, in this case, we maybe need something like a utility, something that can claim a token too. So uh, what we could do here is we use like the storm crows or maybe in future the stone crows but let's go with the storm crows for now i think it's also the better pick and at uh, Tyrion attachment here storm crows just basically in a vanilla infantry unit it's yeah quite good four plus um, armor six plus morale five inch movement mediocre attack profile and then we can add a nice very very efficient one point uh, attachment here with battle plan uh, yeah, it's, it, he's basically able to give you the right card in the right moment if you really need to. Um, you are cycling cards, or like, like you are discarding cards for that. We keep this in mind for our NCU choices. And you have um, counter strategy, which is basically counterplot or a little bit better counterplot because it can also cancel orders on a stick. So very nice. Yeah. Yeah, so <clears throat> we have 16 points more to spend. And now it comes to the part where the Lannister are going to shine on the NCUs and one of the greatest NCUs in the game, even if, if it's uh, expensive for six points, is Tivan Lannister. I think basically everybody knows Tyrion's had a, a game moment with him and he's so strong. He can 
deal out hits, mega panic tests, deal out tokens, and the most important part, shut down unit abilities for the whole round. And using him, and after this, charging something with the uh, castle uh, rock knights, it could be an easy one turn wipe out. And he's, he's one of the best, maybe the best NCU when it comes to. <clears throat> turning games around into your favor. So I will give you Tivin. Nice. So um, we had, I think, um, 26 points. Now we have uh, 32 points, so eight yes. points left. And uh, we can add two four-point NCUs with that. Um, then we are having, in the end, a uh, seven activation list. Um, I think I would go at this point uh, with Shay because you need, or you don't need, but weekend tokens are great because... Um, because of the synergy with Counter-Strike Disrupt, a weakened token on a unit really says, uh -uh, this unit is not going to charge um, Jamie. And uh, we have neutral points still to spend. So yeah, Shay is, is a good call, I think. And it's in a way uh, the new um, Pycelle. Yeah, Pycelle. Or you can, yeah, yeah I yeah. think he's, she's more flexible. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I've got four more points to spend and I would go with the queen herself, Cersei, because she can search your deck for one of the strongest Lannister cards, uh, together with Counterplot, I would say. Hear me raw. Hear me raw with Tivin, with the knights, has even more one-shot potential. And she's she's a great NCU for four points. Also, Subjunction of Power is nice, but I think uh, Hear me raw is that where the money is. And when you uh, boost the morale test in a perfect world with a panic token and hear me raw. You can deal a lot of damage. And you only have seven activations, so you need more tricks, a uh, little bit more shenanigans. And I think she's perfect for your list. One last yeah. thing to add there. Um, mm -hmm. You are discarding cards, as I said, and Cersei also allows you to get cards back. So it's, um, yeah, I think it's uh, also another argument to, to include her. Yeah, that's true. Right, so that rounds up both unit, uh, both um, both lists. So uh, I think the next step we have to do is um, deployment. We, uh, as a for for um, for the example of setting this up, do the deployment, do the terrain choices. We chose uh, Game of Thrones, and we will uh, use the song simulator. We uh, had a video on like a few weeks back with Chris Stobel who developed the uh, simulator because it's a great way to 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 uh, to show you how uh, both both players will select what what they do how they deploy which, which unit comes first which you know which last how's the how's the terrain place to basically make certain units contribute from it and uh, this is how we will show this yeah so here we are in the tabletop uh, simulator um, the Song of Ice and Fire Simulator. Um, so this is a great way to show off what we are going to do with deployment and terrain placement. But um, before we start, um, just two caveats on this. So we we will play Game of Thrones. So it's just, you know, it's a vanilla scenario and it's the easiest to explain. Uh, we will skip the objective cards for now because this adds another layer of complexity, which we do not want to see here. So the first thing we do before deployment starts, before we think terrain, there will be some discussion going on on the matchup. So in both players, so Daniel and Martin will um, guide us through what what do they think about the matchup and why. So so you can so you can basically achieve the same kind of knowledge on why they do certain things uh, when deploy and uh, when they do deploy and uh, terrain. So Martin, kick us off. So my thoughts on the matchup, uh, <clears throat> I need to be careful about Daniel's crossbows because I have no range units. Um, maybe I leave them on one flank alone, it depends. Uh, of course, I need to be very afraid of the Tivin bump with uh, Lannister Knights. It could be easily kill one of my units in one activation. That's very good for Daniel. Uh, Jamie is a threat in his Hello, DS as well. I only can attack him if I have my card winter is coming because then he can't use his set for charge. Um, 
but on my side is I am I have more mobility than him. I have more units. He has two pass tokens, but this is going to help him only two rounds. And I can, because of my I have more units, I can play the mission a little bit more easier, and I'm not so into fighting. Yeah, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, like yeah, my my thoughts on the matchup would be, um, I have I do have long range, so I really um need to make sure that they create an impact during the game. But at the same time, um, I have to keep them protected from yeah the threats on my opponent's side. So that's one thing I I have to um yeah keep into or take into account. Um, Jamie um can. Be like very aggressive so i definitely want to put him in a position where he can really do his job and uh, shine because yeah it's all about him in this list a little bit um all the cards are about him as i said so he needs to be positioned carefully um, at the same time i have to um watch out for the mobility of my opponent watch out for the traps i really don't want to get encircled so i somehow need to do something uh, about this and um the last thing would be that I have less units on the field um, and I have also more points in NCU. So in case we should end up with the same victory points at the end of the game, I would um, probably lose a draw if um, nothing um, would be killed. So the thing is, the point is, um, I really have to achieve something because if he just sits back and scores with more um, units on the field, I would lose. So I have to... Yeah, keep that in mind and um, leave a path open to my opponent. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, we assume that Martin won the dice roll on terrain. So, Martin, what with this strategy in mind, what would you do on your first terrain piece? Yeah, basically, if you have... Uh, no special idea and also good advice for beginners. Just grab the good old werewolf tree mm. and put it in the middle. Um, yeah, it's also good for Daniel, but it's also good for me. And the thing is why I'm putting this werewolf tree in the middle is he can't put some nasty terrain in the middle like a swarm that could block my Tully Knights from charging. And if you have no idea, you don't harm yourself with the werewolf tree. Just put it in the middle and see what the other guy is doing. So it's a good beginner advice. But even on higher tournament play, you can do this pretty <clears throat> easy. And it's it's not going to ruin your game plan. I see a lot of games where somebody is putting down a palisade or a forest. And then um, in the circumstances of the game, it's bad for him and not that bad for his opponent. Okay. Yeah, so, so my answer would be like, I really want to, um, as I said, make sure that my range unit um, is able to come into play. And um, to enable that, I want to have um, something that protects my range unit, which will be a palisade. Um, because, yeah, it simply blocks opponents off. And I want to place it in a way not too far from um, from where the action will be, um, yeah, will be going live. So a little bit between um, the two the two objectives so that the crossbow unit could camp on the objective um, if he has to, if it has to, or yeah, just still use it so to support the middle, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a pretty strong move from Daniel here. So <clears throat> his crossbowman will be basically safe behind his palisade. What I'm going to do is I choose a forest. Uh, I put it here so that one of my wolves, um, <clears throat> if he's going to change his mind and put his crossbows here, so I can hide one of my wolves behind this forest. And hopefully, he will score five nice points for me. Okay, um, so I have a last terrain piece to put down. And um, as I said, I want to do something about encirclement and protecting my flanks. And at the same time, 
Um, yeah, I'm not too happy about um, the wheel retreat in the middle. It's okay. Like I, I, I sometimes um, do put down a wheel retreat as Lannister too. But yeah, probably I want to do something to balance this out. So I would pick a cops pile and um, would put it on uh, one side, like next to the middle. Um, um, but yeah, so that it basically you create a quarter where um, you can also use the corpse pile to protect your flank, right? Because um, I would also switch it a little bit so that I use the full length of the corpse pile because, um, yeah, imagine if um, a cavalry unit is flanking, I could use the corpse pile to my advantage in the way that it also um, yeah, is negating the charge bonus, right? So, um, and since I know that I will probably deploy behind the palisade, I create a little, yeah, kind of defensive uh, perimeter like there. So, yeah. So either like way, this? if I, yeah, like this, like either way, if okay. I, if I get the site, it's fine. I can play with it. If I don't get it, I have probably um, an, ad yeah, an advantage in the morale department. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next roll would be up, and um, we decided that Martin can choose sides. Is that correct? Yeah, but basically we said, like, um, I would win the roll because, yeah, Martin won the terrain roll, and I would yes. probably in this case say, okay, the turn sequence is more important to me, yes. so Martin can, can choose sides. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> in this case, when I can choose sides, I would switch sides. So that the corpse pile is on my side because I don't want to give Daniel the advantage of the defensive part of the corpse pile, and I would make him deploy first. Mm -hmm. Okay, that worked. Nice. Um, always, if you have to deploy first or basically as a, as a general rule, you want to um, always do deploy the units first in a, in a way that you don't give away information. Like if there's any like obvious choice that you and your opponent knows that you will probably do that, do this first. And for me, this would be um, placing Jamie in the middle because he's my centerpiece. He wants to contest the middle objective. So that would be a good thing to do. Yep. Yeah, no big surprise here. As I told you during uh, terrain placement, I will pick one of my wolves um, to here behind the forest so that he can walk to this objective over here and score five points for me. I choose Shaggy Dog because Grey Wind is a little bit more defensive. I know Shaggy Dog is a little bit more. Uh, offensive, but I have a different role for Greywind. Um, I'm looking for his uh, mercs, and if he's in melee with them, they only hit him on five, so I will deploy Greywind later here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next thing for me would be putting down the crossbows in a way that they could march onto the token number four. And maybe like two little things that you want to do as a routine when you um, do the deployment, in my opinion, like you should always check whether there's enough space, for example, for like your two units that uh, they can fit in between, um, between the two units that you now placed. And at the same time, you should also ch always check for like um, the flanks. Um, in this particular case, what would interest me is um, there might, might be a situation that the um, palisade gets destroyed, whatever, that there's no space for a unit to connect in the f um, in the flank of my of my crossbows, basically. So I will probably, I don't want to um, uh, to make it in a way that no wolves can connect. That would be too close to the um, to the table edge. But yeah, at least I want to make sure that yeah, no infantry or cavalry unit can make contact. Mm -hmm. So like this? 
Looks good. That two units fit. That two units would would would, would still fit in, uh, fit in there, like um, like so. Yeah, and and what also is probably nice just to to keep twelve inches between um the two two infantry units, like to keep Jamie's unit and uh, bronze unit into twelve. Okay. Twelve inch currency. So those those guys fit, and they are. <clears throat> So like this? Yeah, it's just that's also just a general thing. Um, there are armies where it's really important to keep twelve inches between your units, i.e., free folk. Um, and it's just a good habit to just check this these little slain pricings uh during deployment. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Um next up I'm going with Grey and if I put him here, he's basically dead because he can't charge the crossbow man he's not doing enough damage um, so i just put him somewhere over here away from the crossbow man uh, to see what is going to happen here but those wolves are pretty safe from this crossbow man and can do their job maybe i can bring Greyrend to here um, to score even more points for me Okay, so I, I still don't know anything <laughs> because I just see two wolves that could basically end up everywhere. So I will just um, keep on going with my with my ba uh, game plan. And for me, now I want to put down the knights and the knights want to go uh, to the left side of Jamie. Um, even though it is cavalry, I don't want to have my cavalry on the flank because what would happen, and um, I see many, many people doing this, and I think it's not a good idea to put your like heavy hitter calf on the flank in this case, because like they would easily get tied up um, by the wolves, and that would be yeah a catastrophic scenario. And I really want to make sure that they can deliver the punch at the right moment when I really need it, um, much rather as a as a like counter punch, um, because I yeah I have I mean I have pass tokens, but I don't have the activation advantage i don't have the mobility advantage so i have to be really really careful here and that's why i want to um, put them there yeah so next up are my trackers uh, put them to here just a little bit away from the crossbow man the reason why i'm putting them here is they can march up like here like this, and then they can start annoy Daniel with the weakened token, with uh, with the with the vulnerable token, with the traps, and they can slow down Jamie and Scarily very hard. And it's a little bit risky because there was two victory points, but I have two more units to protect them. I have Aya, uh, who can do a maneuver or retreat with them. It's okay to put them here. Mm -hmm. I was about to ask that, really, because um, normally, what you, what you, a lot of times, what you see. I mean, I really feel the hidden traps. What, what you normally see is like alpha units, right? Death Star units being in the middle, marching forth, being a strong defensive force or an offensive force. And this is more of a, yeah, I would consider it more of a tech piece in your list. Yes. So, uh, but, I, but, but, but I definitely see. You still have the Tully Cav out. You still have um, the the Krenokman out, and both are pretty can be pretty devastating. So you need to look out for that. Okay. Yeah, and it's so also Daniel, like really really annoying to have a, a unit that can engage um, with a range attack um, because yeah, yes. Jamie, Jamie, they they can really um, be a pain in the ass, and um, Jamie probably wants to stay at the token, and they can yeah really. Um, give him a bad day, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I, I can see that that placement. Okay, so yeah, my last unit would be um, Stormcrows, yeah. and um, I want to put them on the flank, um, not in a normal square fashion, but rather looking, right? Yeah, where they are basically, but looking to objective two, so that they don't align, um, but are rather, yeah, positioned like this basically, um, because I'm as, I'm assuming he wants to flank me, and um, I now am already pre-positioned a little bit, um, and I could easily go to objective number two if I really wanted to, and he makes pressure on the other side. And at the same time, this is not a way um, people deploy often, 
and it might confuse people a little bit, which is good because then they are now not yeah thinking about their own game plan and how they want to win the game. So <laughs> I really <laughs> like to do this sometimes. Okay. Great. So two yeah. more units for Martin. I will put my knights to here in this matchup because I have the activation advantage on the uh, battlefield. I pretty I'm pretty okay if these guys fighting these guys, so that's okay for me. So I put them here, and Rob is my next unit. I bring Rob as close as I can. I would check. Uh, Alexis to be within short range because of Rob's tactical reposition. So he can move this wolf himself, the trackers, and the knights. Um, that's one of Rob's um, advantages that he can give some extra three inches. So it's perfectly used. Um, Shaggy Dog's job is just to go here. He can do this in round one. So it doesn't need to be within six of Rob, but the rest of my army is within mm -hmm. six of Rob. And that's basically my deployment. All right, great. So that finishes terrain placement and the deployment. Um, so is there anything else you want to share on your, like, is there this, like, like game plan on round one and two, where you think what, what should happen? Or is that the moment where you just, you know, adapt to certain situations? So let's just say Martin goes first and he does, you know, there are certain things that are set in stone, like the letters and stuff, right? But you would, would you adapt to certain things? Or da Daniel, for example, are you planning this Tivin bomb um, already to, to kick off in a certain round? So let's say round two, round three. Is there already a game plan or are you just going along what Martin does? I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I will go for turn one. So I have a natural sequence and tempo and all that, meaning that... I will have looking for these opportunities um, around round three, right? So I really want mm. to do probably a slow round one. I, for example, I could take horses in round one and really charge up the middle with Jamie would be a possibility, right? Mm. Um, if if I get the right cards and so on. But probably I don't want to do this if I grab first player because I have the tempo um, in round three or going into round three. So mm. yeah, I... I I'm looking for these opportunities, and maybe what I really want to is to make to make as um, as safe as possible to really get one unit out. And to make this happen, I probably have to yeah connect one crossbow attack or something. So I really have yeah. to look for opportunities, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right. So in Martin, like with this list, you 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 um, said you have the advantage on the table. And um, what I really see is you putting pressure on Daniel by like like sitting Shaggy Dog on this objective token, which basically ensures that that you quickly score, right? And um, Daniel, at least for now, does not have this advantage. Or if he does, if he wants to counter you, he needs to put the cutthroat, uh, the the Stormcore Mercs to token two to basically, right? Uh, do do the same. He also has the crossbows, that, but then he puts the mercs into into kind of danger, right? If he would. So, what is your like in round one to two? What are you trying to do? Because we 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 all assume that Daniel would take would take first player. Yeah, my plan would be I will move would move my shaggy duck to here. Yeah, I think that's basically five points for me because he's pretty safe. Um, so those two units, Rob and Graven, try to hunt down the Stormcrow Mercs because they can pretty easily do this. Um, then I also get rid of Turian, which would be very good for me. And um, maybe if I'm lucky to get the kill, then I can move Graven to objective two. Mm -hmm. And then he's in a lot of pressure. But um, as Daniel said, he has more points in NCUs. So I can live with the draw. Uh, I will win the pressures on him. I have more units. 
I need to look how he's going to spend his past tokens. And I can relax a little bit and wait. But also I need to be afraid of the Tiffin Bomb, his good cards, um, the Crossbow Man. So it could be an easy game, but I need to be aware all of the time of what he is doing. All right, so are there any final words um, from, from you guys? Um, if not, um, anything? No, I'm just, uh, now, now that we talked okay. about it, I, I'm really, I'm, I would be really excited how this game plays out, right? <laughs> okay, so we can do this offline, right? Yeah, so, um, yeah, so this this finishes the second series of our, like, uh, like beginner's guide or, like, you know, uh, covering certain topics, t target certain topics within the game plan, like list building, or we did list building. Now we did the deployment and terrain placement. So there will be further episodes where we talk about the tactics deck, where we talk about certain game modes, right? So there will be definitely some more of those. So if you enjoy those, uh, just put your comments down below um, and leave us a like or a subscribe. Um, definitely check out the Discord to uh, connect with uh, Martin, uh, Daniel, m myself, and all the other great people that are on the Discord. So, um, yeah, that, that finishes um, the second episode. And uh, until we see you next time, roll those quits. Come for the hits and stay for the crits.